Slave Rebellions at Sea and on Land, a comparative perspective by Professor Winston McGowan, written in 2005 as a part of the Walter Rodney Lecture Series, read by Nikita Blair. This extract was edited for your listening pleasure. Part 4. The Objectives of Rebellion Revolts on land usually had one of three objectives. Firstly, there were the reformist revolts. These were designed to secure more limited gains or improvements in the slave system, rather than freedom. For example, some rebellions were intended to force slaves' masters to remove a cruel overseer or manager. Others were used to demand a greater quantity or better quality of rations. Secondly, there were escapist rebellions. These revolts were designed by the slaves to overthrow the security system on the estate and thus enable them to run away to freedom. A typical example of such rebellions is one which took place in 1673 in the St. Anne Parish of Jamaica. There, a group of about 300 account slaves revolted and took to the woods as fugitives. Similarly, 17 years later in 1619, about 400 slaves on the Sutton Estate in Jamaica's Clarendon Parish set fire to the estate and escaped into the woods. This was the origin of the famous Clarendon Maroons, with whom the British were forced to sign a peace treaty in 1739 nearly 50 years later. In short, many of the participants in this type of rebellion had the ultimate intention of establishing or joining a maroon community. The third type of rebellion on land in the Americas may be described as revolutionary. The slave participants in this category of rebellion intended to overthrow the slave system and gain their freedom immediately and directly through the revolt. However, they did not have uniform expectations about what life should be like after the revolt if it was successful. Some rebels wished to become independent farmers, while others anticipated becoming free workers who would enjoy reasonable wages and working conditions under a new employer or perhaps even under their former master. Rebels in this third category of slave revolts also had different views about the political formation of a post-rebellion society. The slaves in some revolts were prepared to become free men who would remain under white rule. In other rebellions, however, the participants intended to bring an end to both slavery and white colonial rule thus transforming the society into a state run by blacks. In short, some rebellions were staged by slaves who wanted much more than legal freedom. These slaves also desired political power and in some cases economic autonomy as well. This was certainly the case with the slaves who rebelled in Burbis in 1763, in Saint-Domingue, Haiti, in 1791, and in Barbados, in 1816.